Welcome to iLecture Online. An interesting outfall of understanding about vector fields and conservative versus non-conservative vector fields is the realization now why the gravitational field is a conservative field, is a conservative vector field. So here we have a graphical picture of what a gravitational field looks like. If this is the surface of the Earth, and of course we take a certain portion of it, so it looks flat for a small portion of it, we can see that the arrows represent the gravitational field. The farther away from the Earth you are, the weaker the field gets, the closer the stronger it gets. And we're now going to take a path, a circular path, or in this case a rectangular path, a closed loop path in that vector field. And we've done it in a rectangular fashion because it makes it easier to see why it's conservative. Notice that traveling from this corner, our starting point, to the very top here, where we're going to turn to the right, we're moving against the field. The field is directed downward, we're moving upward, so this is what we would call a negative contribution. We, what, we, what happens is we lose potential energy as we go up, so there's a negative contribution to the line integral here. Then as we move across perpendicular to the field, there's neither an addition or subtraction because the angle is 90 degrees and the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Now here we travel in the same directions. So we are losing potential energy as we're dropping closer and closer to the surface of the Earth. Notice that the magnitude of the field here is the same as the magnitude of the field here, but here we're traveling in the opposite direction compared to here. So whatever we were subtracting here, we're going to be adding here. It's going to be the same amount. They're going to cancel each other out. And then as we travel perpendicular again to the field, there is no contribution at all. That will be zero. So you can see that the amount of addition versus the amount of subtraction, the two are exactly equal in magnitude. Therefore, when you when you move all the way or when you integrate a line integral all the way around the closed loop, the contribution in total will be equal to zero because the field is conservative. So that's what we mean by a conservative gravitational field. You can see that every time you travel in a loop, you can have the same addition as subtraction, or in this case, a subtraction as addition, and therefore they will always cancel out. Now, to give you a little bit more insight of the gravitational field, by definition, we use g as a vector, this is the acceleration due to gravity as a vector, to represent the gravitational field, which is equal to the force of attraction to the Earth, the gravitational force, divided by the mass experienced in the force. So the small mass would be a small test mass. This is small m, and this is the big M, the mass of the Earth. So we take the force experienced by a small mass, is being attracted to the Earth, we divide that by the mass of the object, and that will then by definition be the magnitude of the uh, vector field or of the gravitational field. Now the force due to gravity is equal to g, the mass of the object, the mass of the Earth, divided by the distance between them squared. And of course we divide that by the mass, and if we turn that into a vector quantity, we have to, of course, add to that the r component, the unit vector r component to that or we can make this into a vector and divide by r cubed so that the ratio will be the same between the two. So those are really two different representations of the exact same thing. Or if we simply want to think of it in terms of the y direction, we can then say that we have the negative gm because the m's cancel, of course, the small m's cancel. So negative g times the mass of the Earth times the direction in the y direction so it would be, in this case, the negative y direction divided by the distance between the center of mass of the Earth and the location that we want to check the magnitude of the field. So that's why we now know that gravita gravitational fields are indeed conservative fields. And that's how it's done.